Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this new video. So in this today's video, we'll be solving the problem detect cycle using DSU. So DSU stands for disjoint set union. Okay. So this is a medium level question and it's a problem of the day on Geeks for Geeks. And the company tags of this question are Microsoft, Google and PayPal. So let us go through the question now. Given an undirected graph with no self loops, with uh, V nodes and E edges. Okay. So V is from 0 to V minus 1. So this is a point to be noted. And the task is to check if there is any cycle in the undirected graph. Great. So solve the problem using disjoint set union. So as said, this problem can be solved uh, using BFS, DFS and DSU as well. But they're very particular about the method. They want us to use DSU. So let us solve in that particular approach itself. So these are few of the, uh, some of the examples and the expected time complexity is O of V plus E and space complexity is O of V and we are following the same thing. Um, so these are the examples. So let us go through them in brief. So this is example one. So example one is like this. So there is a cycle between 0 to 4 0, isn't it? From 0 to and 2 to 4 and 4 to 0. Okay. So remember this is an undirected graph. So if there is an edge between any two nodes, that means uh, it is like towards both the ends. Okay. So both the sides. So 4 to 0 or 0 to 4 means the same. So here there is a cycle between 0 to 4, 0 to 4 0, isn't it? So we see a cycle here. So yes, we return a true. That is our answer. Output is 1. So then coming to example 2, we do not find any cycle over here, isn't it? So that's the reason we return uh, 0, false. All right. So we have understood why do we return true and why do we return false. So we have understood that. So before proceeding further, let us understand what is DSU. Okay. So before proceeding further, let us we need to understand what is the DSU, isn't it? So in this case, DSU can be easily explained using the, using this particular case. Let us assume there are three personalities. Okay. Mother, fine. Mother, father, mother, father, and son. Okay. Mother, father, and son. What I did, uh, what is the case here is like. Uh, the court, the court of a city where these people are living wants to find whether this particular son is having the parents as this particular mother and father. Okay. So this son has this person as this uh, woman as a mother and this uh, man as the father. So they wanted to decide this. Great. So what they did is first by DNA comparison, comparing DNAs and stuff, they have figured out that these two, like these son and mother, like these, this is woman. Okay. Let us first categorize is that it has woman. Okay. So that would uh, uh, avoid any sort of confusion. So, and this has man. Uh, man, fine. So they found out that this particular uh, and also this has child. Okay, this has a uh, child. Uh, they found out that child and woman has a lot of DNA similarity. Okay, they got that this child and woman has a lot of DNA similarity. So they found out that like they uh, approximated or they came to an assumption that yes, she is a mother. She is a mother. And uh, he, he, like this person, uh, this child is the son. Okay, this child is the son of this mother. So they got to know that. And after even DNA comparison with uh, this man and the child, they got to, uh, they came to a con an, an assumption that this particular man would be the father, and he is the son. Okay, uh, he is a child or son of this particular father. Now they wanted to know whether these two are are related. Like this mother and father are actually related with each other. So DNA match doesn't particularly mean that these two people are like this uh, mother is actually um, you know the wife of uh, this particular man. So there must be some relation. Right. So after proper uh, re, uh, like evidence and stuff, they got to know that these two are married. Okay, these two are married. Fine. So they got to know that yes, these three belong to a family. These three belong to a family. These three belong to a family. Similarly, disjoint set union works in the similar case. Okay, disjoint set works in a similar case. Let us assume there are nodes like this. Okay, so there are nodes like zero and one and two and three uh, and four. Okay, let us assume the nodes are like this. And zero is connected to six and then seven and then eight and then nine. Okay, and now we found out that there's an edge between 4 to 9. Now you found out that there is an edge between 4 to 9 and you wanted to know is there any cycle between all these things. Okay. Now you figured out that what you will be doing. Now you will be finding the ultimate parent of 4. What is the ultimate parent of 4? First the initial parent of 4 is 3. What is the parent of 3? 2. What is the parent of 2? 1. What is the parent of 1? 0. Okay. Let us stop here. Okay. Let us stop here. And if you see here what is the parent of 9? 8. What is the parent of 8? 7. What is the parent of 7? 6. What is the parent of 6? 0. So you see that there is an ult at the ultimate. Okay. At the last there is some match. Okay. 4's ultimate parent 0 like 4's parent uh, 0 is also the parent of 9. Okay. And you found out that there's an edge between 4 to 9. So this indeed tells that it is a there is a cycle, isn't it? There is a cycle. So 4 is matched with 0. These three, these two are connected. These two are also connected with some evidence that you have got to know, with some proper research you got to know. And now you found out that there's an edge between 4 to 9. There's an edge between 4 to 9. So that means this all things are related in a cycle. These three are all, all of them are in a cycle. So the same concept is used. This is the concept that you're going to use to find whether there's a cycle here or not. I hope you people understood. So it boils down to this particular thing. So I hope this example, this particular example would have given you some uh, uh, clarity about what am I trying to say? Once you have got to know the ultimate parents are matching, the ultimate parents are matching, and now there's an edge that you're dealing with. So right now I'm dealing with four and nine. I came to have come to four, and I see that in my adjoint matrix I have a edge with uh, nine from four, and I saw that the ultimate parent of four is zero, and same is the case with ultimate parent of nine. Both of them are zero. That means yes, there's a match. Okay, there's a match. So we can come to a conclusion. Yes, that it's a cycle. There's a cycle. And now there can be another case where let us assume there's a zero, and this is one, 
and this is 2 and uh, this is 3 okay so now you might be thinking like initially the init uh, parent of 0 is 0 only okay initially what are we going to do initially we'll be considering each node as its own parent okay so if i just write a parent matrix in this case so parent matrix will, will, will be looking like this isn't it 0 1 2 3 initially all of them will be having their uh, parents as them themselves so 0 1 2 3 so uh, when i come to this particular uh, after, uh, like this 0 so if i write the adjoint matrix so i'll just remove this i'll be writing an adjoint matrix for this particular case so if i have adjoint matrix of 0 as i'm constructing a new graph okay let us assume there are four vertices and there are zero they are zero one two three and now i'm constructing a graph like this zero as the edge width uh maybe three and four and one as an edge width uh, two and two as an edge width uh, maybe uh like uh, yeah two as an edge width one let us assume that and now three as an edge width zero and uh four okay three uh okay let us assume uh we have another uh, bit as well so i'll just uh, write this so five and 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, okay? So, 3 as an edge with uh, 0 and 4, okay? So, coming to this, initially, after when analyzing with 3, I'll come to, and here as well, I need to write, okay? 4 as an edge with uh, 0 and 3, isn't it? So, that's it. So, when I analyze 0, when I analyze uh, this particular 0, when I analyze 0, I see that 0 is connected with 3. I see that the node is connected with 3. So, what I'll be doing is, I'll be erasing, I'll be writing like 0's parent is no more 0, but I'll be writing that 0's parent is 3, okay? I'll be writing 0's parent is 3. I'll update here, okay? I'll update here. And after this, I see that 0 and 4 as also an edge, but I see that 0's edge is 0 parent is 3 so 4 parent is 4 so uh, i'll modify this in this particular fashion here we have 4 also right? so initially 4 parent is 4 okay 4 parent is 4 so what i'll be doing is 0 parent is 3 and 4 parent is 4 so i need to change either, either of them so i'll be changing 4 parent okay i'll be changing 4 parent to 3 4 parent to 3 now when i come to this particular 3 okay when i come to this particular 3 i see that 3 parent uh, 3 as an edge with 0 okay 3 as an edge with 0 so i see that 3 parent is 3 and 0 parent is also 3 parents are matching so can i conclude that it is a cycle no i cannot conclude why because if i just construct it in, in, this in a graph okay so 0 is like this and uh, 1 is like this uh, okay there is no edge between 1 and 0 0 3 and 4 okay and uh, 1 and 2 okay these are connected like this okay these are uh, in this uh, fashion fine these are in this fashion and now what did we see we see that 3's parent 3's parent 3's parent is 3 because originally like initially all the nodes are parents of themselves and 0's parent is 3 after this particular analysis after this particular edge figure after i figured out that there's an edge between 0 and 3 i modified 0's parent as 3 now do i find uh, i see that 0's parent is 3 3's parent is 3 so can i conclude that these two are uh, in a cycle no because we are dealing with the same edge initially we have dealt with this edge that is 0 3 edge this is done we have already uh, figured it out we have already analyzed that edge we should not deal with the same edge once again when we come to 3 so we need to avoid this so how can we avoid this we can use a 2d vector in 2d vector you can like write in this fashion so so in this way, uh, so like this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So you can put like 0 when you're analyzing an edge 0, 3. So you can put 0, uh, 3, like 0, 3 is co column to be true. Okay. So 0, 3 means uh, like if this is uh, like if it, uh, like this comes out to be row and this is like a uh, column. So you can go to 0, 3, 0, 3 in the sense this particular thing. Okay. You can put this as true, but you'll be using a 2D matrix in this case. To avoid that, you can use a map. Okay. Instead of a 2D matrix, you can use a map. So by using a map, you can just figure put it like this. So once I see that I'm analyzing an edge, so I'll be putting like map of. So map of let uh, that edges a uh, and b so i'll be putting it to be one or true okay once i see that a particular edge has been already dealt or and also i'll be putting map of uh, so map of a comma b or map of b comma a both means this one because this is an undirected graph okay so map of a b or map of b a both if i find any one of them okay if i find any one of them when i'm analyzing zero i'll be seeing that do i find map of zero comma three or do i find map of three comma zero in both of these cases if i find any one of like if i find map of map of zero comma three or map of three comma zero if i find any one of them i'll be saying that yes i've already analyzed this particular edge so i did not do anything further okay so that's what i'll be doing so that is the case that i'll be writing okay so i hope you people understood what are we trying to do so this is a very basic approach like the dsu uh, to find very optimal approach as well okay and uh, also another thing to be noted so if i have uh, this particular okay so first thing is this this is the first case the use of map so first one is use of map second one second one let us assume the things are like this okay so zero is here one is here two is here and three is here okay and we have uh, seven here eight here and nine here and now you saw that there's an edge between zero to seven okay now you see that that edge between zero to seven so what will you be doing or zero to seven let us assume uh, three to seven okay let us assume three to seven you have discovered that there is an edge between three to seven now we have come to three and you have seen its adjoint matrix and you see that three is connected with seven now what will you be do, uh, doing so how to make sure all these are connected how are you connecting all these stuff how are you putting that in practical so you can what you can do is so what is ultimate parent of z3 that is zero isn't it ultimate parent of three in your uh, parent vector you'll be already updating it so parent of three parent of three is actually equal to uh, zero and uh, a parent of seven what is parent of seven let us assume parent of seven is actually seven itself okay parent of seven is actually seven itself. and what is the depth of seven depth of seven is three uh, depth of in the sense how many uh childs does parent uh, does this particular node have so after uh, after analyzing this particular thing okay after analyzing this particular thing we 
you can write the parent of 8 is also 7 ultimate parent of 8 is 7 and ultimate parent of 9 is also 7 so because uh, for 8 also 7 is the parent for 9 also 7 is the parent for 7 also 7 is the parent right so i can say that this particular 7 as an edge uh, is a depth of 3 okay depth of 3 and how many depth does 4 have? Uh, 0 have 0 have 0 is parent of 1 0 is parent of 2 0 is parent of 3 0 is parent of itself so 0 is having have a depth of 4 so what i'll be doing is what is the greater depth among these two like 7 and 0 uh, 0 okay so 0 depth is more 0 is parent of many childs compared to 7 so what i'll be doing is i'll be putting parent of 7 as 0 okay once i connect these two once i connect these two what i'll be doing is parent of 7 is equal to 0 because the reason being 0 has more number of you know childs compared to 7 so i'll be putting parent of 7 to be 0 and i'll be adding depth of depth of uh, 0 plus equals to depth of uh, 7 okay so now because this this these two components okay these two uh, components are now connected so 9's ultimate parent will also be 0 8's ultimate parent will also be 0 7's ultimate parent will also be 0 so 7 depth is 3 so all these three things will be the new child for 0 okay so that is how we are modifying the things that is how we are connecting two sets once we find there's an edge between these two great so i hope you people understood so let us figure out that code only so second thing is user map is done and uh, second one second one connecting the components uh, let me write it properly connecting the components okay connect the connecting the components connecting the components okay connecting the component and the third one it's not really necessary uh, to explain but still i'll be explaining finding the parent okay finding the parent okay finding the parent so how do you find the ultimate parent of anything so if i just erase these things uh, for better clarity we just erase this particular thing okay so uh, initially only if i just if i'm just bothered about this particular component if i only just bothered about this particular component initially initially okay initially i'll be like having like this parent of all these all these things like 0 1 2 3 is uh, 0 1 2 3 itself right so initially all the nodes are parents of themselves so when you come to this particular thing i see that one's parent is 0 okay so i'll be updating it here so one's parent is 0 okay one's parent is 0 when you're coming to this particular thing okay when you're coming to 2 when you're coming to 2 i see that two's parent is one two's parent is one and one's parent is zero but how am i coming to that conclusion so once i analyze parent of two once i uh, analyze parent of two i'll see that parent of two initial now is is one so now again i'll be calling parent of one okay why will i be calling it because one is not the parent of itself i've updated parent of one with zero because uh uh, initially we have one parent is zero but uh, that is what the thing that we need to consider so two parent is one that we can identify but what is one parent if you can see in the parent array it's not one one parent is not one one is having some other thing as its parent so that's the reason we'll be calling once again and we see the parent of one equal to zero so ultimately we'll be changing parent of two to be zero okay parent of two to be zero come to this particular thing parent of three so initially like three parent is three itself so what we'll be doing is we'll be analyzing parent of three what is parent of three two now again we'll be calling on this what is parent of two one again we'll be calling on this parent of one equal to zero now again if we call on this we see the parent of zero is zero only. so we'll be stopping here. okay we'll be stopping here we have got the ultimate parent how are we identifying ultimate parent ultimate parent quality is ultimate parent quality is that particular node is the parent of itself node is a parent of itself okay this is the ultimate parent quality what's the ultimate parent quality the node of the node is actually the parent of itself so that is the uh, you know uh, main condition of an ultimate parent so i hope you people understood so these are the three things that we'll be using to uh, you know decode this particular uh, uh, like method so we'll write this here okay so initially we'll be taking parent matrix vector in parent so vector in parent so there are n nodes so n and uh, also we'll be writing the depth so depth n comma 1 right so why n comma 1 because all the n nodes having the depth as its depth as 1 every node is the you know uh, parent of itself so initially everyone will be having 1 and now what's the other thing we can we'll be using a map so map pair n comma int okay and uh, int uh, and mp okay so why are we using a map map already, as we already told we must not deal with the same edge again and again so for that reason we are uh, using a map so the second thing is for int i equal to 0 i less than n i plus plus we'll be having uh, writing the parent so parent of i is equal to i itself right so initially all the nodes are parent of itself so that's the reason parent of i equal to i now second thing now let us iterate through all the edges okay so for int i equal to 0 i less than uh, you know n i plus plus n is the number of vertices okay remember that and for int j equal to 0 uh, j less than agent edge, uh, like agent of i dot size it is a uh, n j plus plus okay so it's an adjoint matrix this is how it has been given you, you can see in the driver code uh, so for each particular uh, vertex there is an, a vector associated in that vector you can find all the elements that it's linked with okay so this is how it is so what is the first edge int a i can say that the vertex that we are dealing with so that is i and int b what is the second node so first uh, if i'm taking an edge if i'm considering an edge the first node would be the vertex that is i and second node would be the uh, the values in that uh, vector that's associated with it so agent of i uh, and j okay agent of i says so what is the thing that i need to check if if i see that mp dot find of uh, this particular thing uh, a comma b okay if i find this uh, is not equal to mp dot n or if i find mp dot find 
of b comma a uh, not equal to mp dot int so in both of these cases i need to continue right because it, this means that it's if it's not equal to mp dot int that means it's already there in the map so i shouldn't consider it or i shouldn't analyze it once again so i'll be leaving it so the same thing that i'm writing here so mp dot find of a comma b is not equal to mp dot int or mp dot find comma of b comma a okay all these key value pairs if i find these two a b or b a i, I need to continue I, I shouldn't deal with it okay so that's what and now if i do not find i'll be writing this in this particular uh, like here mp of a comma b equal to one right so that's what we can do so we are done so now we are analyzing this particular thing if we have come to this particular step now what is the next thing so now we'll be finding the parents what is a's parent so a's parent will be writing a function find parent of uh, find parent of a and parent vector parent vector to uh, c and into b parent b parent is equal to find parent of b and parent okay now let us uh, write this parent function okay so int find parent in find parent so first one is int vertex that we are dealing and vector in parent okay vector in parent so what is that we are doing so we are calling we are trying to search the parent of the parent so we are finding uh, this particular uh, parent of parent of vertex parent of vertex is actually equal to find parent of find parent of uh, parent of vertex and parent isn't it so that's what we are doing so if we carefully observe if we carefully observe in this particular uh, case so first uh, if you are if you are on this particular thing three first you are trying to find the parent of uh, three that is two and again you're finding the parent of two that's one again you're trying to find the parent of one that is zero and now you're stopping here why because parent of zero is that only so if that is the case you'll be stopping that is the base case okay so what's the base case if the vertex that you're dealing is actually equal to the parent of vertex okay so the node is itself the parent of it then we'll be uh, stopping it there when we'll be uh, you know find uh, uh, we'll be stopping there and what is the value what is the value that will be written that vertex okay that vertex so and here also we'll be uh, writing the return okay so th this is it so return parent of vertex is equal to find parent of parent of vertex comma parent so parent of vertex tells that you find the parent of your parent okay so you'll be going to that particular point where till you find the ultimate parent okay so in this fashion we have got the parents and now what do we need to check once we have got the parents now to connect two different components what are we going to do if we uh, see that these parents are not equal okay if a parent if a parent not equal to b parent okay if a parent not equal to b parent uh, if a parent not equal to b parent then we need to do some uh, that means there are two different components we need to connect them else if parents are same that means we can return true okay return one and after this whole analysis we do not find anything we return zero okay so now our what are we going to do in this if parents are not equal if we will be che checking first if depth of a parent okay if depth of a parent uh, okay, depth of a parent is greater than depth of b parent. Okay, so as we have seen in before earlier, if I if I find that a particular component's ultimate parent depth is more than the other component's ultimate parent depth, that means initial uh, the first a parent has many child compared to the b parent child. Okay, in that case, what I'll be doing, I'll be making a parent as the ultimate parent. So parent of b parent is equal to a parent, and I'll be adding the depth. I'll be updating the depth. Depth of uh, a parent, a parent uh, plus equals to plus equals to depth of b parent okay that's what i'm going to do depth of uh, a parent uh, that's it so if i find that depth of a parent to be greater than depth of b parent i'll be putting b parent of b parent as a parent and i'm changing the ultimate parent and depth of a parent plus or equal to depth of b parent okay and else if depth of depth of a parent is less than okay in this case if it, it is less then i'll be doing the reverse that's it uh, so in this case parent of a parent uh, equal to b parent uh, b parent and uh, what's the other thing that I'm going to do? I'll be updating the depth as well. Depth of B parent, B parent plus equals to depth of A parent, okay? Uh, a parent. And now else, else if both are having the same values, both are having the same uh, level of, uh, you know, child's, both ultimate like A parent and B parent, both have same number of child's, you can do anything. So I'll be doing this particular thing, okay? You can do, uh, you can update, you can make A parent as ultimate or B parent as ultimate, it's up to you. So whatever you're doing, update its corresponding depth. I'm making your B parent to be the ultimate thing. So I'm updating the depth of B parent, okay? That's very important. So once we have done, that's it. We have completed the code, okay? So I hope you people understood what are we trying to do. So we are analyzing each and every edge. And if you find that for an edge, both the nodes are having the same ultimate parent, that means there's a cycle. If not, we are taking, we are trying to connect the two different components and we are updating its ultimate parent depth and we are checking it once again. Okay. So let us even submit the code for your reference and I hope it must work. Um, okay. So there is some issue, but it's going to work. I've already checked. All right. So I'll be putting the same code uh, in the, you know, description like C++, Java and Python. You can go through them. I hope there's no mistake. And if there's anything like that, you can feel free to point that out in the comment section. I'll be more than happy to correct it and check it back. But as far as the concept uh, is concerned, I've explained it to the, in the grassroots levels, uh, like everything is properly explained, whatever the function that we are trying to do and why are we actually using a particular thing. I hope that's pretty clear. That's it. So I think there's no more confusion here. I've explained everything. And uh, so these are the stuff. So thank you for watching guys. Stay tuned.